Okay, in the series of dome building methods, um, we're going to take a look today at uh, stressed skin construction. This is probably one of the simplest um, ways to build a dome. It's not common, uh, I've, not, I've seen very little about it, uh, although my um, studio here, is, which I'm recording this in, is built this way. Uh, so let's look at the principle of this. Um, it's exactly the same as building with paper. Uh, I've built loads of models with paper uh, and uh, initially when I was going to build a dome, this is, this is actually the first dome I ever built. Um, I, I did a paper model to test the principle and then I had some aluminium panels let's have a quick look here flat aluminium panels like this uh, but with uh, a tab on the outside so the aluminium this is 16 gauge aluminium uh, which I think is uh, 1.6 millimeters um, thick uh, and all you do is you fold the panels up like so uh, and obviously you have to fold them past the 90 degrees and in a little bit more but you don't have to do any kind of bevel measurements or anything because there's, there's so much flexibility in there you can bend it roughly to where you need uh, and then just assemble it uh, it doesn't really need um, anything more than that um, Okay, next we'll have a quick look at some pictures of my build and some tips and um, pros and cons of the stress skin build method. I was building a three frequency dome and most people know that you have two different triangle shapes. Uh, so all I did was mark on a piece of paper the exact measurements and allowed a little bit for a tab. I think it was about... Um, 30 millimeters in my case. First off, we better have a look at the um, a cross section through the through the um, two panels. Uh, it's very important to mention that although they are glued together like uh, you would a paper model, and the two edges are riveted in this case um, rather than glued like the paper, you have to have a cover strip. Uh, the, if you can imagine the two strains pulling left and right on the on the two panels, uh, it would be very easy to buckle the the central rivet and pull those panels apart and get all sorts of buckling going on. So you have to have a cover strip in this method uh, to to make it work. Here's three panels joined together without cover strips at the moment, and I just show, I thought I'd show you the window detail on this one. Well, all I did was I cut a hole in the middle of a panel. And I fitted a bubble window. Uh, there's, on the inside, there's a tube of aluminium which acts like one of those sun tubes. You know, the light bounces uh, off the inside and comes into the room. The reason for that is that there's an outside skin and an inside skin, and that tube will link the outside and inside skins. Here's a picture of the construction. You can see the shiny cover strips. Are partially fitted. What I did was I put the cover strips first on on the uh, pentagons and made them up, uh, and then I built the dome. This is the finished dome with all the cover strips. Uh, I'll zoom in here, and you can see if you look carefully that uh, there's thousands. I think there was three and a half thousand rivets in this. And if you look really carefully, you can just see that there is also a hub cap uh, for extra weather sealing. And of course the dome was all weather sealed over the top of this, but that gives you an idea how much work there was in the um, cover strips. And this is the finished dome. Um, with it, it's got a green sealant over the top of it, uh, and that's complete. So let's have a look at some pros and cons. Um, cost first. Uh, it's probably the cheapest way to build a dome. There are no hubs. Uh, there's no struts either when you think about it. It's just the skin with a fold on the end. There is the cover strips and the uh, joint between the cover strips, the, the, the rivet in, in this case, makes a kind of a stiff uh, strut assembly. But there's 
as far as cost goes, there's no timber struts or no hub joints or nothing. That's why it's so cheap. It's also very strong. That's that dome there is uh, like I said, 1.6 millimeters thick, and I could jump about on the top of it, no problem at all. And it was made. 15 years ago so I, I can vouch that it's still in good condition and still working well uh, 15 years on. As far as disadvantages go, uh, there is only one really that I can think of, um, but it's a big one. Aluminium is a really good conductor of heat. So what that does is you get a warm day uh, warms everything up inside the dome and you get a cool night and you get condensation but when I say condensation it literally rained indoors it's the worst possible scenario for condensation and um, it's not a case of a few drops of droplets of water it pours off the aluminium because it's such a good conductor of heat it's given up all its heat to the outside and it's it's like a, a working like a dehumidifier, uh, so you really need to deal with the issue of condensation. Uh, what I did was I glued insulation and put spray insulation. You have to glue it to the side because if, if you put in insulation that doesn't touch the aluminium, the water vapor will get through and still form on the aluminium. So you have to actually stop the water vapor uh, getting in, in contact with the aluminium. But as long as you deal with the uh, condensation issue, it's a really efficient way to build a dome. Okay, that's it for the stress skin build method. Uh, like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And I'll see you on the next one.